Peace and blessings. Keep up the lessons. You know who this is. Crypto B-Boy coming at you. Yeah, I'm here. I uh, want to try to get, give you some information on some stuff, uh, especially dealing with Embridge and the things that are going on with the BRICS nations. And talk a little bit about it. All right. So let's get in. Are you ready? Let's get it. Alrighty then. Yo, so what's going on, people? Thank you for coming in and joining your bro. I'm here. I'm going to get into it real quick. I uh, just want to thank those who are staying in with your brother, subscribing, and do not forget to subscribe. You know, when you see videos that are very informative to you and give you information that's going to help you in your life today, that's a video or that's a channel that you should subscribe to because you can utilize those videos that these people like myself give to you. And it is valuable for whatever you may be able to use it for, especially in the crypto space, in finance, in finance, uh, digital finance, fintech, all of that, that, that I, that I actually go into in various, uh, subjects. And so this subject is going to be based on, um, Embridge. Okay. So I wanted to just read a little bit from an article that I found and, uh, it's in BIS, uh, which is bank of yeah. international settlements, a document on project Bem Embridge project Embridge excuse me, <clears throat> Project Embridge reaches minimum vi viable product stage and invites further international participation. Updated uh, June 5th, and it's 2024, Project Embridge continues its development and has reached the minimum viable product MVP stage. While broadening its international reach, the project aims to explore a multi-central bank digital currency, which is a CBDC. Uh, many of you know about it. Um, this is um, a more centralized, um, controlled digital currency that's based on blockchain technology, but it's more private. And in <clears throat> the people who build it, uh, they build it for the particular um, company or bank. And basically, central bank will be the main um, central entity that will control the CBDC. So platform shared as we continue, platform shared among participating central banks and commer commercial banks built on distributed ledger technology, which is known as DLT, to enable instant cross-border payments and settlement. Project Embridge is the result of extensive collaboration starting in 2021 between the BIS Innovation Hub, the Bank of Thailand, and the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates, and digital currency, the Digital Currency Institute of the People's Bank of China, and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. The Saudi Central Bank is joining Enbridge as a full participant, and that, that's been recent. There are also now more than 26 observing members. The project Embridge is the result of extensive, no, I read that, I'm sorry. The project aims to, I'm sorry, my, I got to put on my glasses, guys. Where are my glasses? Oh, here you go. <clears throat> some, 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 some stuff is getting a little blurry to me. Um, the project Embase, uh, project aims to tackle some of the key inefficiencies in cross-border payments, including high costs low speed and op operational complexities. It also addresses financial inclusion concerns, particularly in jurisdictions where correspondent banking, which connects countries to the global financial system, has been in retreat, uh, causing additional cost and delays. Multi-CBDC arrangements that connect different jurisdictions in a single common technical infrastructure offer significant potential to improve the current system and all and allow cross-border payments to be immediate, cheap, and universally accessible 
with final uh, with final settlement. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> The platform based on a new blockchain, the Embridge Ledger, was built to support real-time peer-to-peer cross-border payments and foreign exchange transactions in 2022. A pilot with the real value transactions was conducted. Since then, the Embridge project team has been exploring whether the prototype platform could evolve to become an MVP, a stage now reached. To achieve this, the four founding participant central banks and monetary authorities have each deployed a validating node, while commercial banks have conducted more real value transactions in preparation for the MVP release. In tandem, the project steering committee has created a a bespoke governance and legal framework, including a rulebook tailored to match the, the, the platform's unique decentralized nature. The MVP platform is enabled excuse me is enabled to undertake real value transactions subject to jurisdiction preparedness in parentheses and is also compatible with the ethereum virtual machine this allows it to be a t- test bed for add-on technology solutions new use cases and interoperability with other platforms now that is very significant right there the mvp and it having combat compatibility with the Ethereum, the EV, EVM, right? Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, because, uh, as it says, in cases of interoperability on with other platforms, this can include other platforms like XRP, <laughs> XLM, XDC, and such on from there as we go. Uh, we deal with those platforms or those fintech companies that provide um DLT on the level that will be for faster and quicker efficient settlements and pay- payments you know whether it, be, whether it be cross border payments and the settlements being that these are these are bridge currencies like bridging currencies or you know like XRP is a bridging token a liquidity token in a sense and it can allow these interoperabilities to turn to, to transact from the, also connected as we know we there are many documents and many uh, much information about the interoperability and capability of the EVM being integrated with XRP ledger the XLM <clears throat> you know XRPL and other ledgers. So this is great, great news. As it enters the MVP stage, Project M Bridge is now inviting private sector firms to propose new solutions and use cases that use cases that help develop the platform and showcase all its potential. Interested firms can apply to participate via the participation form. So then there's the information of all the different uh, banks and central banks that are included such as Asian Banco Central uh, Filipinas Bank of Indonesia Bank of France Bank of Israel Bank of Italy Bank of Korea Bank of Nambia Central Bank of Bahrain Central Bank of Chile Central Bank of Egypt so they're all basically a part of this uh, is a there's many countries so just leaving off from there let's close that out but I thank you guys for listening um, and being patient, hanging in there. I'm not going to try to make this video too long, but I wanted to give you some visual, uh, you know, footage and information from the likes of um, a good, um, well-known. She's not cryptocurrency um, uh, content creator, but she's a content creator in the field of finance, and especially due to her. Her position and her professionalism as a as a I think a tax a tax uh, lawyer or something to that aspect can't remember but anyway um, let me bring her up um, real quick for you guys uh, no wrong one sorry Lena Partrova yeah and she has her own YouTube channel um, you know and you can of course watch the rest of this video this video is a uh, project Enbridge explained. Bricks multi 
currency. So just listen in a little bit um, and, you know, you can comment on it. Get, let me know what you feel about it. Um, and I would, love, I would love that. You know, I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, and, you know, we can uh, interact in the comments. There's no doubt that a technology... Excuse me, or what have you. So let's, let's go uh, with it. Sorry, I jumped in too quick. <laughs> Just wanted to say, but you can interact in the comments and give me your, your opinions and, and whatever you might, might want to say about this uh, project. And, and there's others that have mentioned, but me, for me, I have other groups of people that are coming to know and like people that are in my group of, of, of wealth building um, or, you know, group of people called Halaf Wealth Builders. And then you have um, uh, At Cost Metals, which is uh, Precious Metals uh, purchasing platform. Um, you know, they, they provide uh, precious metals at cost and no mark, no markups and you don't have to pay premium prices. So it's a really good um, company that I'm invested in. Um, you have a, you get a subscription to it for um, 12 months to or or <clears throat> which is $149, or you can get a subscription for 18 months, which is $399, and plus you get three extra. And basically, they sell coins as well, besides bars and all that. But the coins are the real main um, product that is basically sold. Um, frequently because most people uh, are able to afford coins uh, other than you know gold like an ounce of gold is like two two dot two thousand twenty or twenty three hundred dollars or so right depending on where the market is right now for the gold um, and silver it goes up as well but silver is really at a good uh, level for people to afford you know it's more affordable so most people purchase silver coins as such as myself but um, I'll speak about that later a little more. But let's listen to the video and uh, we'll get into that. The architecture such as Enbridge limits the ability by which a single country can intervene in the transactions of other countries. And that's one of the main attractive features of a distributed ledger architecture. So in that sense, there is no doubt in my mind that the ability of the United States to weaponize dollar-based transactions through its ability to influence the operations of SWIFT will be curtailed going forward. Hello everyone. Today I'm excited to welcome back Warwick Powell. Warwick is a junk professor at Queensland University of Technology in Australia and a senior fellow at Taihe Institute in Beijing. Warwick is also an expert in all things blockchain and digital technologies, which is the focus of our conversation today. Warwick, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you again. Great to be here again with you. CBDC project Ambridge has been making headlines in recent months. Blockchain-based Ambridge does not support settlements made in U.S. dollars, from what I understand. And this may mean that once completed, it will become the system that will accelerate de-dollarization around the world. Effectively, its goal is to become the basis for a global alternative financial system, the system that will support multipolarity. Warwick, could you start us off by walking us through what Project Ambridge is? how it is structured, and who are the key stakeholders? Sure, let's, uh, let's try and break it down. Um, project Enbridge is a collaborative project involving a number of central banks together with a larger group of central banks and associated financial regulators from different countries in the world as observers. So the founding partners in the project are the... Bank of International Settlements, the Monetary Authority of Hong Kong, and the Central Banks of China, the UAE, and Thailand. More recently, the Central Bank of Saudi Arabia has joined as a full participating member. The way that this project works is that it's actually organised, before we get to the technology part, um, is that it's organised in effect as a multi-party committee-based um, governance system whereby the 
principal participants have worked together to co-design and progressively test and implement and retest a technology to tackle some uh, long-standing problems in cross-border payment settlements. The problems that they're trying to tackle really go to the costs and the time inefficiencies together with the risks of censorship that come from the traditional architecture of cross-border settlements. The way that cross-border settlements historically has worked is that the settlement of transactions between organisations in different countries actually takes place through a series of steps and those steps involve relationships between those organisations and their commercial bank, the commercial bank and its relationship to that country's central bank, and that central bank's relationship to the counterparty central bank, and then back down the architecture to the counterparty organisation. So when transactions are being undertaken traditionally, they ultimately have to be settled through central bank to central bank messaging, whereby the ledgers in both of those banks um, are adjusted accordingly, where the ledger in one central bank um, is added to and the ledger in the counterparty bank is subtracted from. This process is quite clunky. It is quite slow and is quite expensive. The principal ways that this process has been implemented in recent times has been through what everyone knows as the SWIFT messaging platform and that enables participating banks to communicate with each other to send secure messages in accordance with a standard format so that they in effect can understand what the instructions are from the other side. This process can take many days for the ledgers to be adjusted and the fees and charges that are incurred in this process are quite high. So we've got a problem of cost and time now, those problems, of course, pre-existed the more recent set of problems, and those recent set of problems have gone to how this particular set of institutions has become weaponized. By weaponized, I mean that they have now become part of a process through which one particular party in particular, namely the United States, has been able to cause the operators of SWIFT to exclude the banks from certain countries or specific banks from being able to exchange messages with others. In other words, kick them out of the key information sharing arrangements that enable cross-border payments to work. Enbridge begins to... Yeah, and I just wanted to speak on that real quick because that is where the significance of what's going on with BRICS is very important and the BRICS nations, the block and all, and even these extra BRICS nations that came recently throughout the year of 2023 to 2024, right? Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, um, uh, what is it? I think, can't remember the rest, but it's several, <laughs> several many others. Uh, but they are very, very firm on not being controlled any longer by the American, you know, hegemony over as far as financially is concerned more than anything else. Even the military part is a whole nother story, but the financial control that they've had with being able to weaponize the dollar, <clears throat> uh, or we would say that the, the global reserve currency dollar <laughs> or the petro dollar and control through sanctioning because the most of these countries how they get sanctioned that they have money in the in in the you know in the dollar their money that they have in several banks or in 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 bonds right treasury bonds that it's, it's it's valued in the american dollar so all the american government has to do is say sanction them, close their accounts, or any American bonds or accounts of money that is American will not be transacted, will not be able to be 
transacted for any usage whatsoever these 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 accounts are flow frozen so that totally locks all money away from any of these countries whether it was russia which was recently and other countries were threatened to do so as well uh that they were going to do this america was going to do this against them and other countries in the past have this has been done and if you swift as that the, the actual gun and the bullets were the american dollar right just shooting them out <laughs> and and taking them out where financially is concerned right not even talking about military wise with the proxy wars that are going on but anyway i just wanted to pinpoint on that and uh we'll continue a little bit more and maybe it'll close out in a few minutes tackle all of these issues so the way that Enbridge does it is that it does it with a distributed ledger or a blockchain. The blockchain architecture um, is established in two basic layers. The first layer is a layer in which the participating central banks operate nodes, their own computers, which maintain a copy of the ledger. And those nodes also have the authority to be part of the consensus mechanism, which is the way in which this shared ledger is updated. The second layer of this architecture is the layer of the participating commercial banks. Now, those commercial banks also have nodes, and those nodes have a copy of the same ledger. The difference is, is that the commercial banks don't have the authority to participate in the ledger updates directly. So only the participating central banks actually have the authority to participate in the consensus mechanism that finally settles what the updates are. This distributed infrastructure enables the contemporaneous updating of all accounts. So now we've solved the time problem because instead of having to wait for messages to be moved from one party to the other and for updates to ledgers to be made, they are made at the same time. In being able to make them at the same time, we also reduce costs and importantly because it's a distributed ledger where all the participating central banks are members of the consensus mechanism, no single bank can censor or block or amend transactions. That's the basic design, if you will, and the operations of Enbridge to date. Is Project Enbridge focused solely on wholesale CBDCs or e-commerce transactions, um, or does it have plans to eventually include retail CBDCs? At this stage, it's very much focused on the bank-to-bank -bank transaction environment, and I guess in that sense you would say that it is a piece of wholesale transactions architecture. More recently, the... the uh, okay, so we'll, we'll leave off on that. And I uh, thank uh, Lena Patrova for bringing that information. It's a very good informative video. I'll put the link in my description area so that you can um, go directly to her video and watch for yourself. It's a really good video. Um, and I'm going to finish up because I didn't finish the whole video myself. Uh, but yeah, I, I watched enough and I do got a good gist of information. And this is for those of uh, from my community of the, the brothers and sisters in uh, Halal Wealth Builders, as well as uh, at Cost Metals for information for you guys to, to you know update yourself and to understand a little more in depth about Enbridge and what its basic process is for and what it's going to do and what, what is the, where's the benefits at and where lies the benefits and 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 if there are not fully a hundred percent benefits what is going to be the cons or things that might come into the future for um for people period let alone governments and central bank uh entities <laughs> who are the main controllers uh, uh and will have usage of this um technology more for them to control um payments and bank to bank as the gentleman Warwick uh, Powell has mentioned. So we'll we'll talk more about it. And I appreciate you guys touching base and, and checking in with me and um, watching my videos. And then again, please don't forget to subscribe to your bro. 
and um, check out some more videos. You get, you know, click that notification bell so you can get more videos from me. And don't forget to click the like button if you like this video, and I hope you do. And until next time, this is your bro, Crypto B-Boy, and I'm out. Peace.